Before we begin speaking and demonstrating beat patterns and we do actual conducting, it's necessary to say a few words about the good body posture. A conductor must have good body posture when he is conducting, keeping in mind that the choir singers will imitate what they see. If they see a conductor standing with good posture, chances are they are more prone to have good posture as they sing. The head and the chin should, should be erect. That means they can project. Minimize any sway in the upper body. Crouching, moving the body as if dancing or showboating. These are not necessary. And generally, they do not help the singing or the musical performance in any way. The conductor must always keep in mind that church singing is first of all prayer. And that both the conductor and the singers are ministers of his word. The posture and gestures of the conductor and the singers should never be a distraction to the liturgical service. Even the position of the feet is important. The conductor should stand with his right foot slightly ahead or in front of his, of his left foot and with the body weight on the balls of the feet. This allows for greater flexibility, especially in, in movement of the upper body when that is necessary. The feet should be placed about six to eight inches apart, almost lined up with the shoulders. Let's now speak about hand position and, and the shape of the hand. The right hand is used for, the, for determining the beat of the music, for, for conducting the beat of the music, not the left hand. The elbow should be level with the hand. It should not be lower, nor should it be higher, but level with the hand. The wrist and the hand should be flat to the floor, not perpendicular. If we do this, we're going to get staccato singing all the time, because all we're doing is directing accents, directing downbeats. So the shape of the hand should be like this. The fingers close together. Not tight, not like that but rather like this, think of ba uh, bouncing a basketball. In this way, you'll get a nice flow, uh, smooth beat pattern. The left hand is used for dynamics, for cueing entrances for, of, of the different parts for different singers, for indicating phrasing, for interpretive gestures. All of that is done, accomplished by the left hand. It should be, when not in use, it should be motionless, either hanging to the side, uh, resting against your body like this, or flat on the stomach. The space allocated for the movement of the hands in conducting is referred to as the conducting plane. This plane is not higher than the head, nor lower than the waist, and it shouldn't extend beyond the elbows of the outstretched hands. So the plane in which the beat is occurring, top is the head, bottom is the waist, left is the elbow, and right is the right elbow, the right hand. Pavel Chesnikov, in his book, The Choir and How to Direct It, divides the size of the beat into five places on this plane. For pianissimo singing, the, 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 the beat is relegated to the waist. For piano, it's relegated to the center of the chest. For mezzo forte, to the shoulder. For forte, to the eyes. And to fortissimo, to the head, to the top of the head. Whatever, the, generally for fast and soft singing, we should use a smaller beat size. And for slow or loud singing, the beat can be larger. The downbeat indicates the first beat in metered music. And there are three parts to a beat pattern, to a beat itself. There is the beginning or the preparation, not to be con confused with the preparatory beat. Then there is the ictus. The ictus is the, is the beat itself. It's where the beat occurs. It's the point of the beat. That's where sound is, em is emitted. And that's indicated by a change of the direction in the beat. 
And then there is the rebound. And the rebound uh, will indicate to the singer whether that should, should be sung staccato or legato. We will demonstrate this in, in, in a few minutes. The downbeat is the strong beat of the measure. And it's usually accompanied by an accented syllable, such as Lord, or Save of Savior, or G of Jesus. Now, the upbeat is the last beat of the measure. And that's compared to the downbeat, that's a weak beat. It usually is accompanied by an unaccented syllable, such as Vior of Savior. Or sometimes it's a continuation of a word. For example, Lord or God. 